So imagine you're sitting down for a little ham radio and chill and your radio makes this face at you. You're looking at plus 20 to plus 30 over S9. That is a noise floor that is like akin to someone screaming in your ear while you're trying to listen to classical music. Your radio simply cannot receive any signals over a intense RFI interference at that level. And that was exactly what I experienced about four or five months ago. Today on the Ham Radio Crash Course, I'm gonna to talk to you about dealing with power line noise, what is probably the worst possible thing you're gonna to have to experience with if you're ever affected by it. So stick around, thanks for watching. So thanks again for checking out the Ham Radio Crash Course. My analytics tell me that only about half of you that watch the videos are actually subscribed, so if you could click that subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. It's free, if you don't like it, you can always click unsubscribe later. Earlier this year, I came out with a video titled, We Are Destroying Ham Radio, and kind of walked through how to fix dealing with RFI in your home shack. That was the problem, though. I only talked about dealing with RFI inside your home. That's not too hard to do, right? We walked around some things you can do. Take a radio device, go around, turn off the breakers, turn them back on to figure out where it is. I'll link you to the video so you can go watch it and find the details out. Now it's totally easy to hear. It's the TV. Let's see what happens when we turn it off. Gone. Oh. My bad. And I got a striking number of comments from people on what to do when you have power line noise or some kind of noise that's outside of your home. Well, we're gonna tackle power line noise today, which is probably the worst situation you can be in as a ham radio operator, aside from maybe getting hit by lightning. All these things are bad. We shouldn't get into competition of what's worse. Power line noise. Basically what's going on with power line noise is your power company probably has a junction on a power pole kind of by your home and it's going bad. And that connection is getting weak or whatnot and it's causing an arcing situation. That arcing situation harkens back to spark gap transmitters way back when humans figured out what radio technology was all about. That gap creates a broadband RFI generation. This big transmission that covers almost all the ham bands. The only way you can really solve that is if you narrow down the location of the interference and you get the power line company to come out and fix it. So today I'm gonna to walk through what I did and document my experiences on how to deal with power line noise. The first issue that I had to tackle was figuring out if what I was experiencing was actual line noise or not. And I actually used a video that I found on YouTube. I will link it in the description. And basically what it goes through is using an SDR, software defined radio, to find out, take a snippet of recorded noise, the peaks of the noise, and matching them up to a 120 hertz sine wave using some software like Audacity on your Windows PC. If you note that there is a relationship between the peak and the valleys of the sine wave, then it is highly likely that this peak RFI you're experiencing is power line noise. Now, of course, that's North America. You may have a different Hertz uh, sine wave based off of the mode of power that's running in your native location, but at least that's what it's like in California. So I did my due diligence. I figured out that, yes, it sounds like this is power line noise. The second thing I did was, of course, shut off all the breakers to the house again. Once I turned everything off on the mains power, the noise didn't go away at all on the radio. I was on power by battery, and I still had this massive noise floor, 10 to 30 over S9 noise floor. The next step at that point was to go ahead and take out a Yagi. I used a Aero antenna Yagi connected to a handy talkie that had an S meter and walked around my neighborhood like a weirdo, uh, scanning around in a circular motion, walking around. And I was able to find pretty quickly where the intense spots of RFI were. Okay, here's, so here's the junction box around the other side of our wall, uh, pointing up to the power line that I think connects to it. We still have the noise. Also that power line. We've come about a block away. You can, I'm pointing at the power line. You can still hear the noise. 
But then if I sweep over here, the noise is mitigated extensively. So it seems to be over on the power line side. Remember, the RFI you're experiencing is going to be extremely broad-banded. You'll be able to see, see it in a lot of cases on 70 centimeters and 2 meters. All you need to do is turn the squelch off on your handy talkie. Now, with your handy talkie with an omnidirectional antenna, you're still going to hear all the noise, but you won't be able to direction find where that noise is coming from. That's where things like loop antennas and Yagis come in really handy. In fact, I'm holding two radios that are really good for that, the uh, Kenwood THF6 and the Yaesu FT3DR. Now the trick with this part, the direction finding part, is you may get some red herrings or you may find other interference along the way. If you're unfortunate enough to live in an area where they have like a grow light operation going on for some uh, hydroponic setup maybe, you could be experiencing massive RFI. So just because the noise is coming outside of the home, doesn't mean that it is power line noise specifically. But I was pretty sure that that's what I was dealing with exactly. So after I covered the neighborhood, I started going down the road where the power lines were with my Yagi antenna. And the intensity was still really high as I continued walking. I kept going pole after pole until I found where the issue was. And then once I found the pole that I thought was pretty noisy, I kept going a little bit further on the other side of the street and turned back to point at the pole. And yeah, what I, what I was basically doing was reducing where other poles that could have problems were adding themselves into the noise by pointing at them. So I found one pole that was pretty noisy, then I went down the street a little bit further, pointed back at it, and sure enough, that was the pole that was causing all the problems. All right, now the journey was out of my hands at this point. I've gotten it to the point where I'm pretty sure it's power line noise. I found the power pole in question that was the problem. So my next step was to call the power company. So with enough evidence that I felt I, I kind of did my due diligence, it's obviously not coming inside my house, and I, I'm pretty sure it's power line noise after doing the check with the SDR. I went ahead and called Edison. I used a phone number that is on, by the way, Southern California Edison is, is my power company. I got in touch with the help desk line and I basically told them the following. I said, I am seeing a significant amount of noise on my radio and this wasn't there yesterday or the week before you know whatever but you want to make it clear that you do use the radio often and you are now getting to the point where you cannot use the radio because of noise and it was night and day difference right i also sent a message to the sce southern california edison twitter account and i did end up getting a response back on both sides i was told on the phone call that they would create a trouble ticket and i verified with the twitter group that the ticket was created. That was on July 24th, 2020. On the 31st, a very nice individual, July 31st, very nice individual named Larry came to the door and said, I'm here to check out your power. And I said, great, the problem is somewhere over there with the power lines. He said, I'm not here for that. I'm here to check your location. I said, well, it's not in my house. The interference is not coming from here. He goes, well, I can't help you then. Um, I gotta go. And so I said, well, what am I supposed to do? And he said, well, my supervisor, Matt, uh, he will get in touch with you. And I said, okay, can we, you know, how do, how do I reach him? Like, what, is, there, is there an easier way? Is just, he's going to randomly call me? How does, how does he know to call me? Is there a number? Can I give you my number? And he goes, hold on a second. <laughs> so he went to his truck, came back, had a phone out. It was Matt. Lo and behold, Matt is, uh, I guess, a, an area manager for sending people out on technician calls or troubleshoot calls. And uh, when he sent Larry out, he thought it was mainly in my home. Well, when I told him, no, 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 it's, it's definitely not inside my house. The interference is, is not coming from inside my home. He said, okay, we, we've got to bring some specialists in then. I said, okay, when, when's that going to happen? He goes, well, it's going to be a couple of weeks. And I said, all right. So that started the, the process of waiting. Eventually, though, not two weeks after that, they did send a team of two men, two trucks, two men, and they had the appropriate equipment to sniff for and find RFI. Now, I'll show you some pictures here. I've, I've got a couple of pictures of it. Unfortunately, I lost some of the video I took. I think I, I'll find a couple bit more and splice it in. What they ended up doing, and I'll post links to the all the information I know about the equipment they have, they first tapped into my antenna on the roof to see what kind of bass noise I had. 
I didn't do this on purpose, but uh, the main antenna wasn't connected. It was like connected on an NFED or something like that. And I, and I realized it after they were scanning a little bit. And I'm like, oh, hey, hold on. So I was yelling inside the shack, hold, hold on, click. And then I heard him go, oh, oh, yeah, there's your problem. <laughs> so it was a significant amount of noise. And, 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 and they said, oh, no, yeah, they had to attenuate it down 120 dB. Uh, makes sense. Before they got it to like calm down to the point that they could get a reading. So what that led them down the road of was putting a, a, an omnidirectional antenna on their truck, holding their unit and dry casing the joint blocks and blocks away. They had to go blocks away to, before the noise would settle down. And we're checking out that uh, pole just a second ago. I like it. Eventually though, they did realize it was about two blocks down from my home and they further honed in on it by using a Yagi and a parabolic dish antenna. Uh, the truck is all the way down there now. It looks like they're checking all the poles, which is good. You know, there could be multiple issues, but wow, the search goes on. All the things that we would use if we were trying to direction find a problem, it's exactly what they ended up doing. They pulled them out and they did very much the same thing. They'd start where the pole is, see where the highest intensity point was, aim to the other pole, check that pole, go on the other side of the pole, aim that pole, check that pole. And then they did it from the other side of the road. So they know that they're not getting false positives by multiple poles that have problems, right? They want to identify all the poles with issues. They spent a good amount of time, a couple of hours, just looking for all the poles in the area that they thought there was problematic you know, issues with. And, and I did point them in the right direction. It, it ended up being uh, one of the poles that I kind of pointed out to them. That's when I lost all knowledge of what was going on for the course of, of multiple weeks because the noise floor didn't change. It's better now, but um, still have some problems. Basically at that point, by them coming out and doing the study, it's basically acknowledged that they have about 60 days to fix the problem. Because once they realize it is their problem and they're creating interference, the FCC basically starts a timer. I could make a complaint, and if that starts, the FCC could af come after the power company for not fixing their problem, particularly because they know they have a problem. So they told me in, in full disclosure, they're like, hey, we gotta be better than 60 days with this. Realistically, we'll be about 30 days. And guess what happened? On the 30th day of waiting, boom, my S2030 plus over S9 noise floor completely disappeared. Now, I still have uh, RFI in the shack. My wife is still at, you know, adding electronics on a weekly basis as we're stuck indoors, uh, but it is no longer because of stuff outside of my home. And that's the trick. So is, is my situation unique? Probably in the sense that yes, the power company did come out. They were very proactive. So Southern California Edison, uh, thanks so much for being proactive. It took a little while, but I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's unreasonable. In fact, I think you're probably faster than, than other companies in this space. Also, big shout out to Dave. Uh, there's another individual, I won't go into any information, but Dave apparently works at SCE. He doesn't work in the, the technical area specifically, nor in my area exactly. But I think Dave was maybe helping things along, um, not from the point of calling people up necessarily, but checking to see where they were at with, with whatever the requests were and then kind of letting me know what was going on. Basically, though, after the assessment was done, there wasn't much Dave or I or anyone else could do. The only way to, to end up solving this problem was to get someone on a boom, a cherry picker, and, and get them up and see what was going on with those connectors. Must have been the connectors, though, because there was some work done a couple months ago, and, and ultimately that was the reason that the noise dropped back down. So I am guessing that is uh, that particular problem. I hope I don't have problems for a long time. But if you are experiencing problems, I'll recap really quickly. Contact the power company if you're sure that the interference is not coming from in your home. If you have the wherewithal to check what that hertz uh, is, if, if you do a recording and you line up the hertz to a 120 hertz sine wave, if you can line up where the interface, uh, interference spikes are, that'll give you a pretty good idea that it's a power line noise problem. Call up the power line hit them on Twitter, 
be nice. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, be very nice. Be as nice as you can. Yes, it's super frustrating, it's super annoying, but a lot of people you're gonna to talk to won't even know what ham radio is. They won't understand that the interference is causing a problem. They won't know that it's even a thing that they're responsible to fix. So you really gotta be calm and take your time with it and try to uh, educate as you go. And the best way to educate is not by being condescending, it's by being extremely nice. At least that's my experience. And I got this taken care of pretty quickly. So if you are dealing with uh, power line problems, why don't you post below, tell me what your current step or leg of the journey that you're on is and see if we can help you out a little bit. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and I'd love it if you would subscribe. Talk to you later. See ya.